So what is a power of attorney? My name is Andrew Ayers. I'm a estate planning and business lawyer who works with families and small businesses to protect their legacy through planning. Today we're going to talk about some basics of what is a power of attorney. Now, if you don't deal in the legal world or you're not in financial accounts very often, you may not have any idea what a power of attorney is. But it is a very important tool in your estate planning toolbox to make sure that your finances are protected. Now there's a second type of power of attorney, a healthcare power of attorney, which we're not going to talk about today, but that document deals with who's making medical decisions for you in case you become incapacitated. What we're talking about is what's called a durable power of attorney, a general power of attorney, or a financial power of attorney. Now depending where you live, your state probably has a basic form for a power of attorney. You can download it from the state's website. And usually there's going to be a list of about 10 to 15 powers that you can give to somebody. And at the bottom, there's usually an, a catch-all that says if you check this box, that that person has all of the powers listed. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you trust the person who you're giving this power to. Because you're giving them the ability to sell property, to deal with your bank accounts, to deal with your financial institutions to run businesses. There can be a lot of things listed in those powers and you want to make sure you're granting them to the right person. You can usually hold your power of attorney accountable by making them give an accounting at the end of the year to see where the money went and what they did. And when you're considering whether you trust the person or not, remember that if something happens down the road and they've been acting under the power of attorney, chances are a court's going to look at it and say, well you signed off on it and unless you revoked it, they're going to presume that that person was acting under the power of attorney and was acting appropriately. Now, a common question I get from my clients is, do I really need one because I'm married? And generally, if you're married, you think, eh, my spouse will take care of it if something happens to me. But that's not always the case. Some financial institutions will not talk to anybody without a power of attorney. If you work with a financial advisor, they likely have an internal power of attorney form that they're going to have you fill out that gives them the ability to talk to somebody else on your behalf. So don't just assume that your spouse will be able to make decisions for you or be able to step in and run your finances. Another common situation I run into is a married couple and the wife owned an apartment before they got married and now she rents it out and it's still in her name. Well, if something happens to her, her husband can't just run in and take over the apartment and manage the finances. It's her separate asset. Even though they're married, she's, he's not automatically entitled to work with that asset. So you need to look at your financial picture and look at what your assets are. If everything is joint, then chances are you may not need a financial power of attorney. Everything is probably covered. Your spouse could step in. However, especially if you are not married, a power of attorney is very important to make sure that there's somebody in your life who you trust who can help manage your finances and some of the other powers that are listed in case you become sick. Now the power of attorney does not survive your death. So when you die, that power of attorney is no longer in effect and your estate plan, your will or your trust will take over what happens to your assets. So you can think of it as an interim step between uh, when you become sick and then when your executor would take over for your will. So it's a very important period and that might not be a short period. It might be years if you get sick and are unable to manage your finances and you wanna make sure you have the right person there. Now there's two ways you can approach this. The first way you can do it yourself. You can go to your state's website and they should have a form for you and you can download it and you can try to fill it out and you can probably get this one right because it's a pretty simple form. But the smarter way to do it is work with an attorney. You're already working with an attorney on an estate plan and if you're not, you probably should and make sure that a power of attorney is part of your estate plan if it makes sense for you. If you'd like to talk to somebody about a power of attorney, you can go to andrewmayers.com, my website, click the schedule a consultation button. You'll be taken to my personal calendar where we can set up a legal strategy session to review a power of attorney and whether it makes sense for you. Although you may not deal with them on a daily basis, the power of attorney is a very important part of your estate plan and to make sure that your assets are protected in case something happens to you.